Hi, welcome to Universal Interiors. I'm Les Inglestead, and I get to have Uncle Bob Inglestead, Robert Inglestead, with me today. We're going to do a little bit more sharing on this whole history of his buddies and himself and the beginnings of that great DL Mountain that's in our backyard. So we were on to a part of the story was that so you now had a good total of 20 skiers on a hill one day. Yeah, oh, that was a big and That day. was a good day. And how much did you charge those folks to get into Well, that? I think it was 90 cents. 90 cents, yeah. yeah. That's a little different than today, but still. Well, yeah. But you left them a little bit a little bit to go home, a little coin in their pocket, so well, you didn't take that whole dollar? Well, they had 10 cents then for right. a, a cup of coffee. Or... And did you have like a little warming, like a little uh, hut it was there? A sh it was a shack. It was? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was there like a lift? Like you'd go in in a little shack and they would take your money and that's where the cookies would be or something like yeah. that? Or... Well, they really couldn't come in. It wasn't that big. Oh, it wasn't big. that <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need something that fancy that yet. No, oh, but we we had a lot of fun. And yeah. how about how many total? When did you say that's enough runs? That that's enough trails? I mean, how many of those trails that we see these days? How many? Was well, we had we started the west side. Okay. And we didn't do very much on it, but that was our big dream. Oh. The west side. Really. Yeah. The bigger. Mm hmm Yep. And we had about. I don't know I can't remember what we called them. Chipmunk. Yep. Uh, Yep. And then there was a, I, I can't quite remember. That's okay. And now you're, it's in but the But we 50s. did have some fun experiences with that West Hill. Please tell me. Well, we, uh, Jim Marquette and I were on top of the tow shack. Okay. Doing some rough up there. Okay. And uh, all of a sudden we heard this terrible racket. Okay. Coming from the West. And we looked up, here came a P-51 flying right over the treetops. You were being buzzed? Yeah, I mean, really buzzed. <laughs> and we dove off the roof because we thought for sure he was going to hit those big poles that we had oh, that was, with the pulley on for the rope. Oh, scared him. Do you think the time. hills surprised him, or was he just goofing around? He was goofing around. Oh, but there you were. Yeah, but he, I don't think he saw those <laughs> poles until the last second. And then when, no he, got, when he got back kidding. to the airport, I shouldn't really tell this, but... The uh, mechanic there at the airport, he said, what's this green stuff on the tips of your prop? He was clipping the top of the trees when he came up. No kidding. He thought it was hot stuff, but yeah. it scared us. Oh, no <laughs> kidding. To see that kind of coming at you, and there you are up high on the hilltop? Yeah. That's quite the deal. And so we, we thought we were doing pretty good, but then come October of that okay. year, of uh, 50, okay. we were activated into service. We were in I was the, just going to ask you, I yeah, know that you served. We, we were in a guard. I, we joined the guard in the fall of 47. Okay, okay. For three years. All right. We, as in most of the fellas with you? Yeah. Okay. So most of us were in the, were in the, the guard. Okay. And uh, then come November, that October of 50, Okay. Uh, we got froze for another year because during the Korean War. Okay, okay. And uh, then we were activated in December and went to mm. Rucker. And so we had nobody to, we were all in the service. And it was that, December, prime so, skiing, right? Yeah, but so we, uh, we turned it over to Diedrich and Bai. Okay. Is contractor. That, okay, okay. Well, Dale and I had worked for Diedrich and by during college. Oh, is that right? So it, okay. we, it was kind it of felt a natural, natural thing to. Sure. So they, they kind of took it over, and uh, then when we did get back out again, uh, we had other interests. Sure. Family. I was going to say, was Aunt Lou in yeah. your life and all that? I was trying to picture where that was in the 50s. Yeah, you started becoming dad in those years, right? Well, I met Lou on the September 29th. That was the first date. Mm, of what year? 50. 50. Okay. So then you still, you didn't get to have her on the DL Mountain when you were part of it. You were no. just kind of, that was the end, the tail end of it. Just the tail end when tail we got back out again. And then we, we'd go out and probably look at it. And... Yeah. And remember the dreams and the passion that just got you there. I yeah. mean, that is quite, quite the tale. I know that uh, you kept on skiing because I got to be part of that a little bit in your life, <laughs> just sharing a story about something I'm not too proud of, but 
His well, daughter. I should probably tell about it. Huh? Maybe, but his daughter Julie and I and my husband all shared the same class in Morehead High, and uh, Julie was able to invite anybody she wanted to go to Vail, Colorado. I mean, seriously, I knew that one of my friends went with her, and I was like, that is so amazing. Well. All of a sudden, it's my turn. She's asked me to go to Vail, Colorado. I hadn't left the Dakotas ever. I had no idea what was going to come my way with this invite to Vail, Colorado. And I mean, what a privilege and an honor and generosity that is beyond, I tell you, with these Ingolsteads. And I, um, I'll never forget, this. I was just sharing with my husband uh, doing a road travel through Colorado recently. And I said, the first time I can remember was with Julie Inglestead, and we were reading Romeo and Juliet and driving through the Vail Pass. And, and just, it was just, I mean, it's like crazy good memories. And um, anyways, it is, uh, it's a little bit embarrassing now looking back, but I think we've all had a few of those. But um, so I show up at Vail, putting me in ski lessons for Pete's sakes. And then what did I do to you? You couldn't get off the bunny hill. I failed. It, it was... <laughs> <laughs> and we thought of all the kids that we've invited to come along, oh. she'd be the best skier. <laughs> <laughs> Fear factor. Yeah. That's what hit me, I guess. Yeah. That and the privilege of being with your family for certain, but it was, um, <clears throat> it's really something that uh, having that look back. Well, w when I look back on it, we always thought that we were going to have to adopt you. Yes. Because she Ingles wanted to be an Ingalls kid. Absolutely. Still to this day, I'll never forget visiting with his daughter, Julie, and I'm like, I love that name. She goes, yeah, I do too. And um, it means Angel's Homestead in Norwegian. And it's the Angel's Stead, you know, Ingle's Stead. And when she told me that at one time, I didn't know she was making it up, but I bought it, I think it works perfect. <laughs> and, um, and the truth of the matter is that's exactly who these Ingle'steads are. They're just yeah. amazing family. And I did get to marry their nephew, thankfully. So, um, but they still basically adopt adopted her. me in, in many ways. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's where we're sitting today is actually in my home. And um, the privilege behind this is that my husband put a lot of work into it. But this precious man, my family, um, he was right beside him. And um, the love that you feel when you walk into this house that many people say it's um, due to my Uncle Bob, to my husband's, but again, we're family. Um, and his love and care and passion for building. And I didn't realize that when you said you had done some construction way back, um, that that's how long ago it was in your blood. You're just a builder. And um, he's not done. And I kind of forget how young he is. How old? How old are you, Uncle Bob? 86. 86. See? 86, definitely years young. And he's still building for Pete's sakes here in Crystal Lake. So uh, it's just so amazing that... Um, get to share a bit of my family and then a bit of the area like we were talking of the DL Mountain um, please go out and take a look at that place if nothing else you'll get in there and you'll just be amazed there's a history on the wall and my uncle Bob's faces on a little bit of the tail to tell too but we so appreciate when you join in and listen to the stories that we share because they're from the heart and uh, this man fills our hearts up to pieces he is what love is all about and his partner is no longer with us, but he shares her every day with us just by seeing him because they were two peas in a pod. And um, again, just privileged to share this story with you and have Uncle Bob beside me to do just that. Again, thanks for tuning in.